Beginning as a Naval Special Warfare Research Project in the early 1990s, TC-3 is now the accepted battlefield pre-hospital standard of care based on evidence-based medicine and best practices as reviewed and approved by the Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care, or COTSI. Tactical Combat Casualty Care, or TC-3, was one of the big developments in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The most important measure is how well TC-3 keeps our wounded warriors alive to come home to their families. TC-3 is different than civilian pre-hospital care. Battlefield considerations and conditions must be taken into account. This study documents that we are now doing that better than ever before, with the best casualty survival rate in U.S. history. Pre-hospital care is the most important aspect in ensuring the survival of the casualty, as almost 90% of all combat deaths occur before the casualty reaches a medical treatment facility. The fate of the injured often lies in the hands of the first responder. Initial care may have to be provided by the combatant. The goal of TC3 is to identify and treat casualties with preventable causes of death and keep them alive long enough to reach the hospital. Previous studies have shown that a significant number of deaths could have been prevented with the use of tourniquets for extremity hemorrhage. Since these studies, preventable deaths from extremity hemorrhage have now been minimized due largely to issuing a new IFAC and training individuals to use it. Although TC3 started in Special Ops, it is now used by all services in the U.S. military, conventional as well as Special Ops. TC3 has been a major factor in U.S. forces having the highest casualty survival rate in our history. The approach to TC3 is to identify the causes of preventable death on the battlefield, address them aggressively, and combine good medicine with good tactics. The causes of death for soldiers who died in Vietnam demonstrates that a significant number of deaths occur from problems addressed by TC3, including exsanguination from extremity wounds, airway obstruction, and tension pneumothorax. More recent data from Iraq and Afghanistan show hemorrhage is still the major cause of potentially preventable deaths. We are doing better than ever, but these studies show we still have room for improvement with between 15 and 28% military preventable deaths. The findings published in 2012 showed that hemorrhage was still the leading cause of death among combat casualties by far. The ongoing mission does not stop just because there is a casualty. The three objectives of TC3 are to provide life-saving care to the injured combatant, to limit the risk of taking further casualties, and to enable the unit to achieve mission success. Most battlefield casualty scenarios involve making both medical and tactical decisions very rapidly. Remember, the enemy still wants to kill you. The combat environment does not take a time out just because you have a casualty. Doing the right thing at the wrong time can get you and your teammates killed. TC3 divides care into three phases based on the tactical situation. During the gunfight, attention is focused primarily on eliminating the threat. As the threat decreases, increasing focus is applied to providing the best possible medical care for the casualties. The three phases of care in TC-3 are care under fire, tactical field care, and tactical evacuation care. Care under fire is the care rendered by the first responder or combatant at the scene of the injury while he and the casualty are still under effective hostile fire. Available medical equipment is limited to that carried by the individual or by the medical provider in his or her aid bag. The key sentence in this statement is that the first responder and the combatant are still under effective hostile fire. Tactical field care is the care rendered by the first responder or combatant once he and the casualty are no longer under effective hostile fire. It also applies to situations in which an injury has occurred but there has been no hostile fire. Available medical equipment is still limited to that carried into the field by unit personnel. Time to evacuation to a medical treatment facility may vary considerably. Tactical field care allows more time and a little more safety to provide further medical care. But remember, effective hostile fire could resume at any time. Tactical evacuation care is the care rendered once the casualty has been picked up by an aircraft, ground vehicle, or boat. Additional medical personnel and equipment that may have been pre-staged should be available in this phase of casualty management. Tactical and environmental factors have a profound impact on trauma care rendered on the battlefield. 
Good medicine can be bad tactics. Up to 28% of combat deaths today are potentially preventable. Good battlefield care is paramount in avoiding preventable deaths. In summary, care under fire is the very limited care that can be provided while the casualty and the provider are under effective enemy fire. Tactical field care is performed on the battlefield, but not under effective enemy fire. Tactical evacuation care is rendered during transport off the battlefield on the way to more definitive care. TC3 will give you the tools you need.